welcome to Mower Mike's Garage. And what have I got here? This here is the smallest riding lawnmower I've ever got. This is a 1988 RX-75. She's a 30 inch single blade John Deere, body made out of fiberglass with a big old nine horse Kawasaki on the rear end. Now this thing was made back when John Deere made real lawn mowers out in Illinois, not the Home Depot uh, piece of junk you buy these days. So what am I gonna do with this thing? Well, I bought it for a fella for about 100 bucks, well, 150, and uh, she hadn't run in a long time. So I'm gonna show you something crazy. We're gonna take this 80s technology and get it running with high frequency radio shock waves. Yeah, yeah, this is what we're gonna do. Me, with high frequency radio shock waves and an aluminum tinfoil hat. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So stay tuned and uh, let's see what happens. All right, we're pulling around the back end of her. So the first thing we want to do on this old girl is pull off the carburetor. Now on this old Kawasaki, it's super easy. You just take off the air filter, the housing, this very old cork air filter from the 80s, it looks like. You pull that guy off and then you just pull off the air filter housing snaps off like so and then down here on your carburetor now it's just held on by two 10 millimeter bolts right there so you just take those guys off i've already got them pre-taken off so you got your intake manifold off and now you just have to wiggle the carburetor off as you can see up top it's just got two uh two throttle levers this one's for the choke this one's for the throttle so there you go. So it chokes off. Once that chokes off, then the other one's real easy. It just slides off like so. Boom, boom. All right, we got the carburetor off. Let's get her over to the desk. I've got the carburetor pulled off. And before we get all weird with my new uh, fancy high-tech cleaning method, I want to show you guys exactly why I want to go down this route. If you look at this carburetor, this is from the 80s. This is not a cheap Chinese knockoff. This thing's made in Japan, Nikini carburetor. This thing is a little more complex than your typical Briggs & Stratton. I can see it's got the, the little air vent right there for idling. So it's not your usual one that I would just buy a, a knockoff off of Amazon. And then when we open it up, let's take a look in here. I mean, this thing is jacked up. Now, usually I would go through this, take it apart, and try to clean it with carb cleaner and brushes. But my worry here is that if I try to go in there and take that jet out, it's all rusted. And it's going to completely fall apart on me. And that's why I want to go down this different route. Look at that. Look at that rust in here. I mean, it is gnarly. So this is one of the nastiest carbs I've seen in a while. So let's get high tech with it and uh, see if I can do something with her. All right, are you ready for some high tech rednecking? What I got here is an ultrasonic cleaner. And what it does is that it creates ultra high frequency sound waves and it uses that to clean it. It creates cavitation on the surfaces and it busts off all the grime and rust. And I hear through the interweb that it will clean a carburetor spick and span. So what I've done is I got not your normal one that just cleans uh, jewelry. Now those are like 30 or $40 and they run about 40 watts. No. Mower Mike, I went all out. I got the professional grade, 150 bucks, 300 watt ultrasonic cleaner. Watt. <laughs> so if it works, it will do some blasting. Now I've done some research also, and thanks to Steve's Small Engine Saloon, I'm gonna use a little trick he came up with. And instead of putting it directly into here, because it's gonna make all the my new fancy cleaner nasty, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it in a peanut jar because when you put it in the water, the sound waves will still go through here and that way all the muck and the grime stays inside the peanut jar. Also, instead of just using water in here, this is water, but I've gone and filled up with E85 gasoline. Now what E85 is, that means it's 85% ethanol. And ethanol is one of the best solvents in the world. I don't use it in my lawnmowers, but for cleaning a carburetor in an ultrasonic cleaner, I think that's going to be the bee's knees. So I'm using a peanut butter jar, and this is a plastic container. I thought about glass, but, you know, I don't know these ultrasonic waves, if it's going to blow up, you know, create vapors and whatnot. So my plan is to put this in a peanut butter jar <laughs> inside some E85 gasoline inside of here. 
Now, I'm not quite sure what exactly is gonna go down. I'm a little nervous. So for safety precautions, I'm, I built myself a hat. So we're gonna put on my aluminum foil hat because I'm afraid the ultrasonic waves are gonna go through my brain and it's already fried enough up there and I don't wanna do any more damage. So let's go ahead and zoom in down here and <laughs> see what happens. All right, here comes the exciting part. So I got my E85 uh, ready to go here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop these carburetor parts inside of here and then we're gonna let it rip. Now I have no freaking idea what's gonna happen with this because I have never uh, done anything like this before. But as you can see here, we got all the carburetor parts in there. I'm gonna cinch up the top. <laughs> I am getting way, way too excited about this situation. And we're gonna put her in there. And as you can see, uh, she's in there. So I've never turned this thing on, but what you do, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at just regular heat and we'll do a 30 minute cycle. And here we go. <laughs> Sounds like freaking Frankenstein. Are you seeing here? Oh wow, that's getting weird. This whole thing's starting to smoke. Um, all right. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, let it go for a while and see how she does. We'll come back to it. All right, well, I'm gonna turn her off and we'll see how this thing works. I have no freaking idea. Whew, that was pretty intense. At least I can take my, my hat off now. So let's pull her out and see how it did. I have not pre-looked at this thing, so I don't know what's going on. Ooh, it looks like something came off. It looks like a dirty jar. I don't know. All right, well, it didn't blow up and nothing's flashed back in my eyes. Oh, if this works, this is going to be freaking amazing. I know I say freaking too much. All right, come on, baby. Let's go ahead and get you out of there. Not spilling gas everywhere. Come on. This should be a lot cleaner than this. All right, look at what we got. Well, as you can see, it did a pretty good job, but it's not... It's not... There's still quite a bit of rust on this thing. Uh, so this was with E85. I think we're gonna try something new here. You can see it's a little, a little tight, didn't really clean up that great. Um, all right, let's try a different deal. All right, well my first shot at Hydrosonic Super Duper sound wave cleaning did not go that great. I didn't really didn't get the results I wanted. Uh, so we're gonna try a different angle. Now, I've used evapo rust for years. This is just a great rust remover. It's all natural. I mean, you can drink this stuff. I drink it all the time for a little coffee. But uh, I'm just going to go straight in here. I mean, forget, you know, Steve's great, but I'm just going to forget what he said as far as the peanut butter jar and all that crap. I'm going evapo rust straight into the gut of this thing. We're going to throw about a gallon in here, and then I'm just going to crank it. And that way we get the, uh, the sound waves directly on to the metal. There we go. Now when you use these things, make sure to fill them all the way up. That way the sound waves can bounce around. And I got this little cup here. So, all right, so we're gonna put our carved in here. And it did get a lot of the goo off, but it didn't really tackle the rust like I was hoping. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that guy back down in there. And let's see, don't forget your your safety equipment, and let's crank her back up. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. Ding, dinner's ready. Oh boy. All right, so she's been smoking. I've got the evapo rust up to 175 degrees, and we've just cranked it for 30 minutes. So this is uh, this thing is maxed out. If she ain't clean now, ain't nothing gonna clean her as far as this method. So let's pull out our little bread basket here. Oh boy. Those are some shiny parts there. I tell you what, I think we might have a wiener on our hands. All right, so let's get her over to the table and see what we got. Boy, that's a, uh, she puts out some fumes there when you got the evapo rust. Look at that, I put this intake on there, perfectly clean. That did fantastic. All right, so you see the, uh, man, look at that. That is shiny, like brand freaking new. All right, the big test. Look at that. It got all that rust off there. I might wipe a little bit, but uh, well, I'd say that's a win right there. That looks like a brand new carburetor. 
So, Nat, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, strap this back together, and we'll strap it back on the the old John Deere and see how she runs. But to sum it up, it looks like soaking it in evapo rust is the way to go. And I'm sorry, but Steve Sponge and Salone, uh, your method kind of sucks. The old peanut butter jar did not work. So definitely go with the evapo rust, and uh, we'll see how she runs. Well, all right, the big finale, let's see if she starts. I have not actually started this. What we've done, we've cleaned the carb in the ultrasonic cleaner. I've got my uh, full hat, tin full hat off. I uh, put all new fuel lines, new fuel filter, uh, cleaned up the spark plug. So let's let's see if she starts. I have no idea. I don't even know where the choke is. So we'll choke it up. That's all nine horsepower right there. That's just a little engine, but it's a little lawnmower, and I think she'll cut real good. All right, in summary, I would say that's a success. It's a little smoky in here. But the uh, the ultrasonic cleaner with some evapo rust, this stuff, it works pretty good. I've been using this stuff for years. It seems to work pretty dang good. But still, if you have the time and the tools, I'd still hit it with some car cleaner to go up those jets once it's done, and uh, maybe a little scrub brush to clean her up, give it a little extra shine. Uh, but apparently it works. So with that, uh, please subscribe, and I'll see if I can make a couple hundred bucks off Dr. Bob off this uh, green, awesome machine I got here, Bob. It's uh, it's for sale. <laughs> Lower Mike out. All right, gang, we're gonna do a little bonus episode. What I found here, this is the rustiest part I could find in my whole shop. What this is is a uh, it's a battery box out of a 1985 Honda 250 ES three wheeler, the coolest machine ever made. We'll do a video on it. But uh, I've got it cranked up to 175 degrees, and we're gonna crank her out for 30 minutes and just see what happens. I don't think it's gonna clean it, but you know, you get this boiling evapor rust steaming up, I think it might do it, so let's see what happens. I'm just gonna shove her in there, and uh, we're gonna crank her. Oh, buddy, we've got 30 minutes at 175 degrees, full of evapor rust with the rustiest part at more of Mike's garage. So let's see what she came out with. Uh, I will note that there is some funny fumes coming out of here. <laughs> and I have breathed, so things are getting weird. Oh, buddy. Ooh. It's, uh, it's looking pretty gnarly, but boy, look at that. That actually came out better than I expected. Let's get a little close-up zoom. As you can see, now oh, it's a little hot, but it did take off most of that rust. You can see the black. I mean, it didn't take it all off, but I think if you left it overnight, it would actually clean this whole thing off totally clean. So I'm, you know, I'm a fan for the evapo rust. I would say uh, if you need a quick hit, evapo rust works great. Uh, with the ultrasonic cleaner, gives it a little extra boost that she may need to uh, clean up the rust. So I'm sure we'll have more fun with this old girl as we go forward in our relationship here. So with that, I'm out.